tell me when. What are we doing here? Okay, okay. Well, about a week ago on Street Effects' Facebook, we posted a puzzle that posed the question, what would happen if you flew a remote control helicopter into a train, the stationary, and then the train doors close and the train takes off? Will the helicopter stay put in the train in relation to the earth, or will the helicopter fly with the train? It's going to stay put, and the train's going to move forward. Well. well I thought that as well and I posted that and I started getting people private messaging me death threats because they said I was a dumb, let's use the terms, uh, idiot maybe, yeah, yeah. yes. And um, so anyway, it caused such a stir. We had six and a half thousand comments of people arguing what actually would happen. I think it's going to stay still with relation to the earth. Some of my friends who we think are smarter than us said the opposite. Yeah, you know, up until about three hours ago, if you'd asked me the question, I would have said it's going to stay perfectly still and the train's going to move. And it'll hit the back of the it'll train. Hit the back of the train. But like you, I've asked a few more people and I started to doubt myself. I know. It's kind of like thinking the earth is flat. It's yeah. stupid, but it's, it's, it, it can't move because I think it hasn't got any inertia and, and it's got, not attached to the object. That's right. There's a bit of air and all that, that stuff, but... I still think I'm right, but I think we need to test it. Well, obviously we haven't got a train. No. What we do have is this awesome Model X. Yes. Um, now, that thing you're holding is gigantic. It's, it's not, not going to fit in this. It's not going to fit in this. I've got this little one. Yes. Start with Which these. Are... We've got a big van as well. Yes. I reckon we try the little ones in the Model X. Yep. And then we try that one in the van. Yep. yep. And we've got a couple of different drones as well we can try as well, if this isn't stable, because this thing actually is quite difficult to control. Okay. okay. So, so let's, let's try, try it let's out. Let's do it. <laughs> right. So. You've got a little drone there. Yeah. Well, this is the that world's smallest happy. drone. <laughs> I well, I don't need to compensate for anything else. <laughs> um, I've right. seen how big your drone is. Yeah, you have? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd have to do that again. <laughs> That's a pretty small drone. It is, it is. Well, I figured that the smaller the drone, the more likelihood it'll be able to stay with the air, which is the theory that people are, are giving. The pressurized air inside this camera. Apparently, this is a capsule. You know, I don't want to insult anyone, but I have a lot of friends that have told me it's going to do that. And, uh, and I don't believe it. And if I'm wrong, I may never do another video again. Yeah, I know. I think it's going to stay still in reference to the Earth. So we're going to take this off in the car. These aren't particularly easy to control. No, but well, we've got a um, CASA approved drone pilot to do we this do. for us. Yes. So none of us are going to attempt it. <laughs> um, he's going to try and hover it back here. And I'm going and to drive the car forward. Yes. And the air conditioning's all turned off. All off. It's got a biohazard filter so we're not getting any air in the cabin. No. So people can't say that it's being influenced by the and air yeah. outside yep. sources. Yeah, and as someone asked us, the panel gaps aren't big enough to let the air in. <laughs> so it's all good. Um, right, well, let's uh, let's get this drone hovering and see how it goes. I've got Jared in the back, who is from D2. And he brought his a, own little And he's drone. brought his own, and we're going to give some of these away thanks to him. Now, he's a castle approved drone pilot, so there's no one currently within probably Brisbane that knows how to fly a drone better than him. So if he can't do it, no one can. I'm going to hand this over, and he's going to attempt to hover this thing while I drive the car. Yep. He needs to sort of... Yep, go. Go. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> that right. was perfect. There you go. There you go. But, but I know what you're going to say. You're going to say something about the drone pilot, the little drone, the air, something. You know what? So we're going to use a proper, a massive... Big drone. Big drone. So let's jump in the van and see how that goes. Yep. All right, as you saw in the Tesla, the car was a little bit small and we also screwed up with our video. Unfortunately, the GoPro was in the wrong mode, so... We lost that footage, so we've got this van, it's a much bigger room inside it. This is courtesy of GT Auto Garage. So we're going to be flying the Mavic Pro drone in the back of this, and uh, we're also going to give it a shot with the small drone as well, considering we've got 10 times as much room as we did before. So we've got Jared here from D2 Productions, who's the professional drone pilot. All right, let's try it out. Let's go. Oh my God. Tell me when. Alright. As you went, it's, it's going backwards. It's going backwards, it's going backwards. It's really interesting. As you move with the car, it goes with it. Doesn't it have sensors on the bottom of it though? Doesn't yeah, it have it a camera? Sensors off the camera. It went backwards and forwards. <laughs> and it was going forward. All right, well, surprisingly, we had slightly inconclusive results with the Mavic Pro. Um, it did move a little bit with the vehicle. We're putting that down to the fact that you can't completely disable all the, the aids on that thing because it's more of an entry-level drone. Um, these guys also have a, a Phantom Pro, uh, sorry, a Phantom 4, 
it's too big for this vehicle and we don't want to risk tearing up GT Auto's interior on their uh, van. So the Mavic, I think it's a little bit too smart for this experiment. So we're going to go and switch to this little guy and see how that goes. Okay, go. Oh, that was good. <laughs> It's from the whack. Okay, go. Go, go, go. All right, well, that concludes what tests we're doing today. This little guy was a lot more conclusive in the way that it performed in the vehicle. Uh, but as you saw, it started at the front of the van and then when you accelerated, we didn't go very fast, not like the Tesla, which caused just a, like everything was hitting because we were in ludicrous mode, I think, when we were using that one. But this one here, um, we tried it, we had it hovering. It takes a little bit to get it to be completely steady. I mean, you're a pro pilot and even that was fairly difficult. It was very difficult, five or so goes to get it straight yeah. when we got there in the end. Yeah, and then when we accelerated the vehicle, I mean, it's only a diesel van, so it doesn't have quite the oomph that the Tesla does, but we could quite clearly see this stay stationary with the earth. It did okay, so now we've seen what happens in real life. But why is it this helicopter doesn't move with the vehicle? Let's take this for example, this car on this little board. As we move the board back and forth, the car stays largely in the same spot in relation to the desk. This is known as inertia. Now Newton's first law states that an object in motion will stay in motion and an object at rest will stay at rest unless an external force is applied to it. So in this case, a slight external force is applied to this because of the rolling resistance of these wheels. If it was hovering, and this was an enclosed capsule, there would be a very small amount of air resistance, but it is so small, it's even less than the resistance offered by those wheels rolling against the board. Now, some of you also brought up the fact that if you have a balloon in a car filled with helium, as you accelerate, the balloon will go forwards. This is true, we actually put it to the test. Whoa! <laughs> How does it go forward? It's cool. That is super cool. That blows my mind. <laughs> now this is due to the difference in the way that the helium balloon actually achieves flight. The gas inside the balloon, helium, is lighter than air, so it wants to rise up. Now, if we draw a little picture, here's our Tesla. And here's our balloon. As you accelerate the car, the air itself has its own mass also. Now that air wants to stay put. So as you accelerate, the air all starts to move towards the back of the car. That creates a high pressure area in the rear and a low pressure area at the front. Now when that happens, the balloon wants to get away from the denser air, so it moves forward. And there we go. Now, this may be difficult to visualize, so instead what we've done here, we've got a jar full of water. Inside the jar, we have a ping pong ball. Now, as we move this jar back and forth, you'll notice the same phenomenon occur. As we move to the left, our ping pong ball also goes to the left. As we move to the right, our ping pong ball goes to the right. So effectively, what is happening is our air is in the car and it's sloshing towards the back of the car and forcing the balloon forwards, similar to our example with this jar. Okay, so why is it the helicopter doesn't act in the same manner? Well, the helicopter's lift is achieved by spinning these blades and sucking the helicopter up above it. The helicopter isn't lighter than air like the balloon. This is far heavier and therefore when the high pressure area is collected behind the helicopter, it doesn't have enough force to push the helicopter forward. Now, this brings us to our last point and our last example. So why is it that while you're driving at 100 down the highway and you throw something up in the air, it doesn't fly up and smash into the back window? Well, that's because the car's already in motion and as such, everything in your hand, like this duster, is also going at that same speed. So if we're doing 100 kilometers per hour on the highway, so is this. And therefore, when you throw it up, it'll land straight back down in your hand. We can demonstrate this with this little toy car on this board just again. We accelerate, we get up to our speed, and if we stay at that speed, the car stays still. We slow down, and then the deceleration causes the object to want to remain in motion until it eventually dissipates all of its forward energy. Now, the same will apply if our helicopter takes off while the car is already in motion. So, if we have a helicopter sitting here, flat against the floor of the car, and the car is driving along at 60 miles per hour, the helicopter inside will also be driving along at 60 miles per hour. So if we take off, 
then it will stay in uniform motion with the car itself. Okay, there you have it. I hope we explained this well enough and the next time someone questions you on it, you'll A, have the knowledge and B, you can just send this link if they don't understand. All right, thanks for watching.